uh, say in some forums that some forms of, uh, of, of, of taxation are, are theft. And here we are in a university uh, paid for in part by public taxes. Could you comment a little bit about, about that statement? Right, that's what, more, that's what libertarians do. We protect your rights outside of special interests. And we do very firmly believe that stealing other people's money or voting it away uh, is absolutely theft. I do want to eliminate the personal income and property tax. It's a moral outrage to a free country. A theft is still theft, even by government, even if they come with a gun, even if they say it's for the children, because it seldom is. Well, we're in a uh, community that has voted taxes. Uh, democracy is uh, based upon the majority uh, vote, and uh, communities support education with that kind of uh, that kind of uh, financing. What do you um, think should be an ideal way then to uh, to finance universities and uh, and community schools? Well, rights have to come before all things, or else we lose them. We've seen it all over, and I think the young people are starting to get it. By taxation, uh, we end up going deeper into debt, and who are we going to ask to pay for it? The very people in this institution, the children themselves. We have alternatives. There are alternatives to education. Uh, for instance, I'm very strong on distance learning. We've seen the super success of MIT, who has put all of their courses for free online. Uh, I'm taking a couple. Uh, and now they're testing people. I believe that we should go to a competency test, not a degree, because I remember in college I did work and I did get good grades, but I got the same degree as the people next to me who are doing nothing. It, it actually means very little to the business community and I want to get that up because we look further in, even into our, our government schools, the public system. These kids are not prepared to go to college. Uh, today, like they say, uh, we used to teach uh, Greek and Latin first year of college. Now we teach r remedial reading. And I think we've got to correct that. We all know where Arizona sits in education, uh, where the United States sits as education. I was very fortunate when I was a kid that we had undisputably the top education system in the world. Now we're 39th or 40th, and you can argue, but we are not number one anymore. And Arizona sits at the bottom of 50 states within that. I want to correct that because we need an educated population. And my focus is always going to be on the progress of the individual student, not on preserving the institution of education. And I think the young people are getting that message. Um, would you say, though, that a university organized around classroom learning and um, some kind of presence here. There are 19,000 students on this campus organized around a, a learning model that is not going to be all satisfied by the internet. Um, taking, taking state aid away has shifted the burden to the students themselves, half of them graduating with an average debt of $20,000. And that's incredibly untenable. Uh, you get out of school and you've got your degree and a job that isn't in existence. That's the biggest problem we have. We have too many certified people graduating from college at, in all different disciplines, and there are no jobs. That's why I believe the economy is absolutely the number one issue, because without the economy moving and growing, and it's currently declining and getting faster into its decline, we've got to realize there's no money to fund anything. And incidentally, my proposal doesn't cut all the funding for any kind of public education or instruction. I'm a libertarian and we follow the Constitution. The state Constitution requires that the state provide free or nearly free government instruction. And I think that's important to all of us, and I will mind it. But I have another tax program where the state will have plenty of revenue, and actually my revenue plan as a retail transaction tax only not only satisfies our rights as individuals, but at the same time, the scary part is it could, by, by projection, put as much is five times the money into the hands of the legislature uh, as we've got now. And it's, it's kind of scary to me. It's following a model, incidentally, that was in Hong Kong and Singapore. Would you say, though, that at, at, at a level that, that, that is based upon uh, jobs and job creation, job attraction, that education remains one of the chief drivers of that economy, and that our level of funding here, at least in Arizona, at the K-12 level, is at the bottom of the 50 states. 
Where, where would you, as, as, as governor, address that in a way that's affordable? Well, I think that it's important that what we all have to understand is education is important, but we have to have specific jobs to meet the needs of the marketplace. And right now, we don't have a marketplace. We've lost so much of our manufacturing base. What I would propose is making sure that our children graduate competent in the fundamentals so that they can go on to learn uh, more. And we've got to all understand education doesn't end with a degree. It only begins. And that was a real eye opener for me as a college graduate. It's fundamentally important. I would like to shift the burden rather than trying to teach all students to do all things. It would make more sense to give them the tools to go on to learn other things and allow the businesses to open their own schools that will teach specific skills that can be used in that employment. It makes a lot more sense to follow the market than to try to drive it as we have done in the past. Um, it, it sounds like then you and the Common Core would not would not agree. Absolutely not. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to always be able to say, my school's better than your school. And we could back it up academically, scholastically, athletically. Well, now with Common Core, all the kids can say is, my school's just like yours. You take away competition between schools and try to standardize the whole process, and you lose the essence of what made our education system number one. We are, in effect, cooking our own golden goose, and I think that we should keep it alive for them golden eggs. One of the, uh, one of the main uh, responses on the uh, Flagstaff We Want poll was support for higher teacher salaries. And I think we've seen in some states like Massachusetts, uh, the starting salary is 50000 In Arizona, it's 33000 They cite that as, as a reason why Massachusetts, in fact, has succeeded in some of those, those basic skills. And keep in mind, that's after the additional tax that Governor Brewer put on in place. I want to see that money going to the teachers. You're right. Teachers deserve far more respect than they're getting, and I'll give it to them. But I think of education in terms of practicality, and I would define it as being able to graduate competent young young men and young women who are capable of going out into the world, making their own way, without ever burdening anyone else. Let's uh, change to uh, public lands, um, the forests, national parks. This area is um, probably dependent more than others on recreation as well as natural resources from those public lands. H how does a libertarian look at the federal ownership of, of those lands? Absolutely, adamantly against the federal ownership. I want to see it all under Arizona's auspices so that we can determine what happens to our lands. I happen to have grown up in the forest in New Hampshire. We don't even have problems with, with any of the forest fires that you see out here. And yes, of course, we have a more humid climate. But you see actual, aggressive, and intelligent management of the lands that does clean out the forest, does have fire breaks so they can't get out of control. I, a lot of times we see in Arizona, problems are created on purpose just so some politician can offer to solve them. I want to end that. The, uh, the national parks have been called America's uh, best idea. Uh, they have a national standing. How, how does that sit, though, with your approach to public land ownership? Say again? The national parks remain in, in national hands, not state hands, because they have a national interest. Right. Uh, I'd like to pull those all away. Arizona's parks belong to Arizona, and I believe we can make intelligent use of them and use the funding, which we're supposed to, for education, instead of trying to allow Washington, which is making a lot of great decisions these days, wouldn't you say? I would like to see it right here at home so that we can curtail our political upheaval that we've got, and I think that's one of the things I bring to the table is a measured, intelligent use of our own lands and a complete rebuttal to federal claim of ownership. It is Arizona land, and I want to see it back under our control. The Forest Service has said it can't afford necessarily to do the thinning necessary. It's turned some of that over to private contractors. How would the state afford uh, something on that same scale? I think the state can afford it. It's not like it's unheard of to lie in politics, would anybody think? Uh, but the reality is we can, and we do. I mean, you have to pay to go into all of our parks, and we've got such beautiful land. I want to see it preserved, of course. I'm probably more green than the greens in that sense, that we don't want to tear up any public lands, but we do have a lot of useless land that can be turned into useful land, and that's exactly what I intend to do, and, and to call upon the people who 
have actual experience in this uh, from all parties. And that's one of the things I can bring to the table is that right now we face the biggest problem Arizona faces down at the legislature is political gridlock. You have Republicans who will not sign on to Democrat proposals and the reverse. Whereas, uh, I, you throw a libertarian in the mix, I'll break the tie. And I, I can prove I've done it. I have already done it. Just last year, uh, when the Republican leadership tried to bump the libertarians off of the ballot so as to curta curtail your choices as to who you can vote for, uh, we had the most successful referendum in history. Out of over 30 tries in over 30 years, it was the first one that was successful when they tried to bump us off the ballot because I brought together all of the parties, half of the Republican Party agreed with us, and everybody else. It was the largest, most diverse coalition in Arizona's history. I can work with both sides of the aisle without fear of political repercussion or reprisal. I think that's one of the great things about being a libertarian and bringing that common sense that most people will end up saying, me too, rather than, so what? It's uh, commonly thought that infrastructure is one of those basic government uh, services uh, structures that probably can't be privatized. Uh, do you have some thoughts though, whether it's uh, uh, better broadband connections, uh, solar, solar transmission lines, uh, highways? Absolutely. I, we want to, what I believe we need more transportation in our state so we can get people out, our tourists out, uh, to the various rural areas. And one of my proposals is to top to bottom in Arizona, up I-10 to I-17, all the way up, is a monorail, high-speed monorail system with a multi-track that is covered literally by a solar photovoltaic roof that will power the entire thing so that we don't have excessive costs and so that we have mobility and that can be spurred off into the various areas so that we can allow tourists to travel. And I'm telling you, at 60 feet up to see the beauty of Arizona, we will become a major tourist attraction. I think that's one of the things that the other candidates tend to be afraid of, is taking bold steps in dire times. But I think that's the only thing that'll get us through. And incidentally, lest anyone be uh, upset with a libertarian saying, we want these great public projects, not only will it, it, it employ thousands of people, but it's going to be financed by a public uh, partnership. I think that's fundamentally important so that people can actually own stock in the, the berry rail, if you will. And I think that's kind of interesting to draw something good to Arizona. We've had enough of the embarrassment. We've had enough of the silly mistakes that people have made, like SB 1070, 1062, uh, and of course 2305, which was the one that we turned back. And incidentally, when we turned back that referendum, you should know that the same six people who put it into place a couple of months earlier saying we needed it were the ones who repealed it. They turned tail and run. We don't need any more pansy politics. We need somebody who's got a principle behind what they do and there's no guesswork. Would you, uh, though, in terms of standing on, on principle, you, you're looking to work across the aisle but seem pretty adamant about many of these, many of these positions. Can you give an example of when you might uh, find a find a middle ground? Uh, many times. I'm going to invite the legislature, uh, and I hope that my legacy as governor will not be so much about what I have done. It's what I've undone. We have put a clamp on businesses as far as we've over-regulated, we've stymied small businesses. All you got to do is look at the growth numbers and you see what's happening. I, I want to get rid of the excessive regulation and the taxation and I've proposed a business corporate tax of a flat 4% on the corporate gross so that we don't get in to their business. It's none of our business how a business operates unless they commit fraud or coercion or theft, uh, Bernie Madoff. Um, we have one minute. Perhaps we'll just touch on uh, health care. Um, this, this is an area that, uh, at least in, in Arizona, they've moved to expand some of the coverage uh, for those uh, up to 133% of the poverty level uh, by leveraging some federal dollars. What do you think about that? I want to get rid of federal dollars. I want them out of Arizona. I don't want to pay much attention to Washington at all. And my proposal for health care actually reinvigorates the old county health system so that people do have care. We're not going to leave people on the side of the road. But 
we've got to get rid of this Obamacare, this nationalized program, which is an egregious, egregious dis destruction of our individual rights. We've got to get rid of it. 